to the one who knows me by name I know you hear me No place I'd end up where you would be in hiding Your love always finds me When night falls on me and no one seems to notice see me from high and holy place you're still with the lowly your love always finds me every uncertainty bows in your sovereignty you are good and you're able your promise and if I find myself
Alright, hey guys, uh, welcome to Uncover. We are joined. Yeah, clap, 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 clap. If you want to clap, clap also. There we go, there we go. Yeah, love the energy. Uh, we're joined here by uh, two very familiar faces. Of course, we have Jiamin and we have Sulin. And uh, Sulin is the song writer of the song Undefeated King. And of course, Jiamin was the one who was worship leading, uh, who was leading us in that song earlier. Now, we're going to go straight into business right now. So let's start with Sulin first because you're the songwriter, right? So, Sulin, I want to know as well with all other songs that we uncover. Uh, what is the inspiration behind this song? And may I add to that question by asking, at what stage of life were you in in your Christian walk? Or is there like a period of life? Uh, and yeah, I'll follow up that question with another question later. But yes, what's the inspiration behind the song? What's the inspiration? Mm. Okay, cool. Um, well, um, initially my pastors got, got me to write this song. Mm. Uh, it was like an invitation by the main uh, Every Nation. Uh, it was an open invitation to different churches to uh, submit a song yeah, based on the verse Isaiah 57, 15. Mm. Um, I think it was for uh, our vision casting the following year. But, um, uh, but anyway, the verse uh, says that mm. um, I live in the high and holy places, uh, but also with the low spirited, the spirit crushed. And what I do is put new spirit in them, get them up and on their feet again. Mm. Uh, and so at that time, uh, because it was uh, during the pandemic, right. there was a lot of uncertainties. Uh, so I was able to, uh, you know, personally connect uh, to the verse. Mm. And I was reminded that, hey, you know, with every uncertainty that we face, you know, God is faithful. Yeah, yeah. God is faithful and sovereign. Yeah. Fantastic. So yeah. it was written during the pandemic time. Wow. And uh, Jiamin, of course, uh, you were singing a song uh, earlier. And uh, I mean, my question for you is, uh, again, just what do you think of the song in general? You know, did you, when you first heard it as well, did you just fall in love with it? Were there any parts that connected with you? Yeah, I, I think this song is like a, kind of like a declaration, right? So yeah. we're seeing God as a king. So he's a God who, we're familiar with God as the one who goes to win wars, mm. like to warfare. But when you read the verses, it's actually so personal. Like God is also a very personal God. Yeah. And sometimes hard for our minds to compute. Like on when we compare, especially to earthly kings, mm. they are high and mighty, they are far off. But hey, this is a king that we worship who's also a father. Mm. So I think that was how it connected to me that, even though we're seeing him as an undefeated king, yeah. you know, the verses and all is very personal. He's a God who sees, he's a God who hears. Mm. Yeah. Speaking about personal as well, like Sulu, when you were writing this, what kind of challenges did you face? I know it was an open invitation, you know, but I think for songwriters, I don't know what the process is like for you, but did the words just come naturally to you or did you go through like, uh, I think we had Pastor Andy who came, you know, he was talking about the other song and he was like, it, some songs took him one year. Uh, so what was the process like for you when you were writing this song? Um, I think for me, the first thing that came to my mind was the first line, mm. uh, which is, uh, I lift my voice to the one who knows me by name because mm. I was reminded that uh, God knows me and sees me personally. Mm. Yeah. And um, what was challenging? I think we went through a few rounds of redrafting. Right. So I would write a draft, uh, share it to my pastors and right. then they would give their feedback and then I would rewrite it. Yeah, so what was the most difficult part was the bridge for me because mm. uh, the first few rounds that I had, um, the whole mood was a bit, uh, you know, down and, <laughs> <laughs> and lyrically it wasn't saying anything but I, I knew that I wanted the bridge to really declare what uh, what the chorus has established is mm. that um, God is undefeated. And why is he undefeated? Because he has overcome the grave. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. And for Jamin, you know, when you, you say you connected so personally to the song, even when you first heard it as well. And when you were first approached to sing this song, uh, was it something that uh, you were very excited about? Was it something that you were more apprehensive about? Or did you just receive it with open arms? To be honest, it was a bit apprehensive. Ooh, because <laughs> I want to know <laughs> nothing this. personal, but I, I felt like I was not used to singing songs that were more upbeat. Right. Right. So I was more of like the, you know, slower songs kind ah, of like worship leader. Okay, okay, so I was okay. like, oh no, I don't think I can do this. Right, right. And it was also in a very high key. I uh -huh. mean, Suleen's range is much higher. Yes, and I was yes. like, no, I can't do this. <laughs> um, but of course, after that, it was like, okay, I'm just going to trust that the team, you know, Pastor Andy and all that, they, they yeah. had wisdom to, yes. to put me for that song and just trust that God will carry me through. Yeah. yeah. I think God wasn't just carrying you through. I think Sulin was right there behind you also helping you to carry you through. Yes, so the both you. of you actually gelled. <laughs> I felt very, very well, you know, you guys were singing it as well. So praise the Lord for that. And uh, for for Sulin, you know, did you have a, maybe like a, a story behind this song? Is there a specific story? Uh, uh, yes. Um, 
I mean, at the time, yeah. I mean, right. I mean, I'm still a freelance uh, mm. freelancer, but at the time, I was freelancing, and um, um, because of the pandemic, everyone is figuring out, you know, how to how to move forward. You know, mm, yeah. Mm. So my income was affected, right. uh, and at that time, uh, my late husband was having his own challenges in mm. his career as well, and so, uh, and at the same time, we were also building a church, uh, mm. yeah, together with my pastors, yeah. So. Um, it just felt that finances were very, very tight. Mm. And at the same time, there was a lot of things to do and a mm. lot of uh, growing to do as well. A lot of uh, learning new things, unlearning new things. Mm. I mean, unlearning old habits. And right. uh, when it comes to growth, it's like no pain, no gain, you know? Yeah. So uh, that was the situation surrounding the song at the time. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thanks for sharing that. I uh, really appreciate that. And uh, Jamin, you know, coming up from that, uh, is there a story for you as well? Like, how do you relate to this song? And, you know, how does it speak to you? Yeah, I, I think so. I think at that time when uh, we were recording Revo and stuff like that, I was also going through a bit of a challenge in at workplace. So right. it was a lot of kind of like misalignment of values and me trying to stand my ground mm. and just having that song re- as a song of a reminder. Right. So I would kind of sing that song as a declaration almost that yeah. God is undefeated by all of these things, the mm. big things, but he is also undefeated by the small things like my thoughts or mm. my accusations or my weakness. Mm. Yeah, so in, in those moments, um, those that, that song kind of really did carry me through. Wow. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the melody of the song, right? Because yes, uh, lyrically, you know, there's the words and everything like that. And did the melody sort of just come to you when you when you wrote the song? Or, you know, how, how did the melody come to you? Right? Because it's true. That's, that's, a one, that's, that's a big part of the song as well, the yeah. melody. Uh, well, the first line came to me, mm-hmm. and then you just sort of develop it from there. But I knew that I didn't want it to be a ballady kind of feel. I right. kind of want it to be mid tempo right. and a bit uh, has a bit of a drive because mm. of what it was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. the first line came to you, and then the rest just fell naturally. I wouldn't say so. <laughs> <laughs> so easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think with songwriting, it's it's like working, right? You just right. kind of have to set that time aside mm-hmm. and um, uh, slowly work it out. Yeah. How long did it take you, Sulin, from from beginning, from like the conception, from the very first line? Let's let's say the very first line yeah. till the completion, the chorus, the bridge, and everything. Kau team. How long did it take that process? I'm just so curious to know. Uh, you mean the songwriting itself, right? Everything, like oh, even everything. the melody. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I think the song itself took maybe. Maybe about a month. Uh, but what was really, really uh, difficult for me was the arranging. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that took a long time. Uh, and uh, by the time I was ready to go in to record my vocals, I felt like my brain cells, no more already. <laughs> <laughs> right, already. Everything yeah. used up already. Yeah, yeah exactly. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah. expended for this song. La. Yeah, Undefeated yeah. But, but it, it's, it's worth it. Yeah. It is worth yeah. it. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure it's worth it for many people who just uh, listened to it as well earlier. Uh, Jamin, I, I know that uh, we had a conversation earlier, you know, just a short one, and you said uh, in terms of guidance from Sulin, there was uh, little to none. So, but just for the sake of the question, I need to ask you this as well, you know, because I don't know whether you feel pressure or not. Because oftentimes, right, performing a song is already uh, under a lot of stress and pressure. Let me just say, performing a song under and right in front of the songwriter is right behind you. I imagine it's a different kind of pressure. So, did you receive, number one, any guidance? And and did you face any pressure or any stress singing the song with, of course, the singer-songwriters behind you? And, uh, you know, if, if there is, how, how did you guys sort of overcome that? How did you overcome that? Right. I, I think um, what I always do when I feel intimidated uh. by somebody <laughs> is I actually go and talk to them. Uh-huh. Um, so that's what happened with the first time we met as well at the mm. Revo recording. So right. we, we we had a conversation and trying to, like, you know, bridge that that gap or whatever. However my head would perceive her, I She's like the songwriter, the yeah, original yeah, yeah. singer. Uh, but of course, there was some pressure. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, she gave me a lot of freedom as to how the song would look like. And I'm not that uh, crazy to explore other stuff as well. So I kind of stuck quite quite true to how the song was originally, originally written. Mm, mm. Yeah, so I mean, it was a real pleasure singing mm. your song. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sulin, any any words for your for for worship leader here or not? Uh, yeah. No, yeah, she led really well. I mean, I didn't want to uh, you know, give much input because I always think that a worship leader can bring their own flavor 
and their own freshness to a song. And yeah. so I don't want to come in with my own like, oh, you should do it this way or you should do it that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah just allow that freedom. Lah. Yeah. Great, great. Now we're slowly running out of time here, but I think a fitting question is, uh, what is your hope, for example, uh, for this song, Undefeated King? You know, it's two years old right now. You know, it's been sung in Revel, it's been sung on Uncover. And what is hope for this song moving forward? Um, well, my hope for this song is that um, it will remind people that uh, to place their hope and their confidence in God. Mm. You know, even if uh, even if things don't work out the way you want or you hope, you know, in the face of your pain or in the face of your suffering, mm. you know, God is still sovereign. Sovereign meaning He has the ultimate power. And um, um, He has a far, far greater plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, whatever we go through in this life, you know, it doesn't take away the reality of the gospel, which is Jesus has come to pay that price, uh, not just so that we can have an abundant life here, but so that we can have life forevermore. Yeah, so Amen. I hope that uh, uh, listeners will uh, be reminded yeah, when they hear this song. Yeah. Fantastic. Jamin, uh, for you? Well, I hope that more churches would sing Malaysian songs uh, yeah. instead of, you know, looking outwards and thinking that, oh, only... Uh, songs written by people of other countries are better and this is proof that there's actually many many amazing yes. Malaysian worship songs yeah. amazing thank you so much ladies really appreciate our time and of course really appreciate uh, both of you being here on Uncover and of course uh, if you guys are watching and listening to this right now you know, and if you are inspired and you want to sing Undefeated King in your churches as well you can always search for You Are The Revolution uh, on YouTube uh, you know alternatively you can also just click on the link on the dis in the description box below where we can provide you the chords and the sheets and you can just take that and of course uh, if you want to reach out to Suleen and you want to ask her whether she can sing it any other way I believe you can ask her lah, huh? you can just DM her <laughs> PM her or anything if you want to sing it in a different flavor. La. Yeah, you can ask for approval. La, okay. But anyway, guys, thank you so much. Of course, if you want to follow us on social media, you want to see more of this content, you can subscribe to us at uh, Let's Get Real. And uh, don't forget, guys, we're also on Discord. You can join our server and we can do live with many other hundreds of people there. Uh, other than that, you can follow us as well on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's about all the time we have here today. Any last words, ladies, before we sign out of here? Uh, no, thank you so much. No. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you guys again next time on another episode of Uncover. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of our podcast. We believe and trust that you'll be inspired, blessed and encouraged by this episode. And if you'd like to see more episodes like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel, like this video and share it with your friends. Also, we have a Discord community where you can join, have fun and even seek for prayer. And of course, if you want to support this ministry, this studio and keep us going, you can drop your love gifts at the bank details that you see on your screens right now. Be sure to earmark Let's Get Real or LGR so that we know that your giving will be used for this show. Thank you so much in advance. Until next time, God bless. Oh, yeah.